What's up guys? Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We are back on another episode and I am very, very excited about this one. We are working with, right here, you see four oxygen reserve bottles. These are out of um, like a World War II bomber plane, like a B-24 or a B-25. These were the oxygen reserve bottles that would have sat above the cabin that they would have obviously run off of. They make amazing fuel tanks, as you guys have probably seen while we were creating and building the Midnight Special, the race car. I had one and it was the perfect fit for the fuel tank. They're stainless, they're perfectly clean inside. It is going in a, an insanely cool car. My very dear friend, Craig Ross, he's uh, back home in Canada. It is a 32 three window coupe with a blown uh, Arden 286 cube flathead. It has that subtle aircraft theme, not over the top and I'm honored to be able to create a couple of pieces for it. Having said that, the one in this episode is gonna be creating a fuel tank. We are gonna split two of these, and we are gonna make one really long one, and then we are gonna add our filler neck, our sender unit, and a couple other bits and pieces. All right, so first things first. Unfortunately for a car, if you were to wanna to take it on a little bit more of a a distance drive. Uh, a single tank like this isn't gonna really work. It is a really cool setup. Some guys, Sheldon, he actually has two in a really neat 28 Roadster on 32 rails. And he's ran both of his parallel uh, with the frame rails in the back like this. And then they have a joiner that runs in so you can fill up both. And then obviously they go down into the single fuel line towards the motor. What we'd like to do is we wanna put two of these together. The first thing is let's lay out what we're gonna do, um, where we're gonna cut these, and how we're gonna join them to potentially make it look like they haven't been joined. I would really like this part where it's, it has the old date stamping and um, yeah, breathing oxygen kind of code. We do have the Holly Easy Level Sender. You guys have seen me use this before with the um, split window radial flyer and it uses a laser, so there's actually no plum in there. And as long as I make sure that this gets the very bottom of the circumference, it will read accurately. We're gonna make a little provision for that to be able to sit. So we are gonna make this the top. And we said we really liked the... I'm just trying to find the best part of this tank that's got the most amount of paint, I guess, on it. I think we wanna go with this guy. This is gonna be our top. So it's gonna go like that. So these two are gonna join this way. So we got that, and I'll just write top. Top on this one. Okay, first things first. I'm using this great little poly block. I got our surface gauge. And I'm gonna try and, I don't know if this is really gonna work, but I'm gonna try and use a ratchet strap, maybe around this block. It's hard to get this thing to stand up straight. It doesn't wanna lay flat either because of all the strapping that's on it. So I'm gonna try and use this ratchet strap. And if I can get a bit of pressure on it, I can hold it in place. Maybe I'll have to do two. I'm probably overthinking this. You guys are watching me going, you're an idiot. You could have done it this way. Yeah, there's just, it's kind of hard to get a, a real level playing surface on it. And I definitely don't want them to come together and kind of have it a little bit off. You guys are still laughing at me, I know saying you're overthinking this. You could have already had them cut by now. But this is sometimes how I think. I overthink. Now I'm gonna, now just for, in spite of that, I'm gonna try to do this. Yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to get to sit level. Oh. I just thought of another way I could do this, but it won't fit. If I had the lathe, could have put that end in center, 
Describe it. Oh my gosh. Light bulb moment. Live center. Do I have one? And would that fit in the lathe? But I'm going to try and see if it will. Because that would be so genius if it did. If it did. In fact. Oh, oh Shiza. This might actually work. <laughs> Look at it. I'm getting way too complicated with this, but it's also kind of fun to do it too. So, get this guy out of the way. So that comes in, scribe, scribe. Join in. This one's going to be a bit of a tricky one. And it's going to come off that. Ha <laughs> ha! Worked a treat. All right. So now we have it here. And I want to cut this one so I can measure it. Then I'm going to put the other one back into the lathe and we'll scribe that one too so I know I get a, an accurate width. Well, that worked out really well. And best bit is, it's really, really straight, which is a good thing.
Looks like now it now it actually looks like C three PO from Star Wars, which is cool. But we now have one piece cut. This is going to be the weird little orb thing. I may actually the scrap pieces of this just put them together and make just a round sphere. Maybe we'll or oh, here's a thought. What about just cleaning up that edge? running a wire through here and putting an antique light in there and having it as a little light. That's cool. Don't think I've ever seen anyone do it. And it's not really a waste because we're kind of building one already. Or could keep the UFOs away, man. They're real out there for you flat earth conspiracy people. All right, let's get the other one cut. Alright, so we got both cut and now it is time to join them up. Alright, so I had a couple of old bends from a job and we've just set it up. What we want is it to be straight up because we are going to do sort of an inside um, fuel cap. So what I'm going to do now is just get a piece of stainless and I'm going to make a little baffle and then let's, um, let's actually mount this now and we'll cut this hole out and we'll get um, the filler cap and everything welded in. And then I'm gonna make a little splash shield that'll sit up inside. That will just tack to the inside and that way fuel that's sloshing around won't be able to go up. Break them in half. This is our left side. Down like that. I think that's pretty dang good for eyeballing. So if we set this guy up on here. That's close enough. All right, so we got the hole to the exact OD, ID, that we want it. And I've just cleaned up around the edge. We've used a little bit of metho to clean it. We have our little bend here. 
we have our torch in hand and what I'm going to try and do is get it central to where I want it. I'm going to run this guy. Now it's going to be 90 degrees, which is perfect right about there. And I'm just going to try and get a little tap on it and then I can move it around. All right, so I got a little piece of stainless here, and this is gonna be my little baffle inside. Reason why it's so small is because I actually like the idea of having the four corners exposed. And what I'm gonna do is I will find my center on here, I will run the circumference of this, and I will add a little flange. In the center, I'm just gonna drill one hole, put a dimple die in there, and call it a day. It doesn't need to be complicated, it's just allowing or it's just helping with the slosh of the fuel going back and forth when the tank is low. So it's just, that's all it's doing. Hopefully, we can get the shape that we want to bend the flange. So I'm just going to do a little test run. Yep, perfect. So we're going to get more, but a bit of pressure on it. See how it's starting to tip it up? So we want to make sure we're going to get a really nice consistent edge. Bing. I think 1.6 stainless in the bead roller too. Trying to put a bend in it like this is a little bit difficult, but does flex a little but we'll be able to knock it out which is good so it should work. Okay so we got this set up and our hammer and we should be able to just tap this over. So 
So that's what I'm thinking, something like that. I'll scribe a line on the inside to make sure it's going to be even and straight, but still allowing fuel to get past these corners. Um, this is going to go in like that, so I want the clean edge to be on the outside. Walk this down. Probably not supposed to do 1.6 stainless with it, but that's all right. Got it. Look at that, beautiful hole. I need to fill this up with hydraulic fluid. It's getting a little bit low. So we want the dimple to go inwards. We want it that way. Then that, and we'll put this guy on, so we don't have to use the nut. Okay. Boom, there we have it. One very simple baffle utilizing a dimple die. Uh, everything's clean, I've just methoded it all. The inside's all clean, I wire wheeled it all, made sure everything was good, Use a stainless wire wheel. Um, so now I'm going to actually do these welds. Uh, nothing else has to happen with this side other than the sender unit, but it's okay if I put this in now. spot to be able to actually get in there but hopefully I can just go like this and get it. We are going to ruin the paint on the outside a little bit, but we can always blend that. I'd rather have a little bit of paint than fuel sloshing around in the back of the trunk. Got a nice freshie on the back side. I am using a 1.6 tungsten. Usually I'd be using about a 2.4 with this thickness, but I got the amperages up. I got the foot pedal. It seems to be doing a, doing a job. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too phased with it.
what I'm thinking is in the areas where we have these joins that I'm not going to be able to get a weld in there, I'm just going to grind these out a little bit. And then I'm going to just do a little weld on each one so that I know that they are 100% sealed in here. And then I'll grind it back down flush. So I'm just going to use the edge of the grinder and we're just going to kind of cut that out a little bit. So I've got room for a weld. And then when I know when I'm welding the outside and I get to the, this area and I go to weld over it, I know that it's 100% sealed. So it's gonna take me a little bit of time, but I really wanna make sure that there's no seepage or any sort of area where fuel could get out of there. I mean, because we have so many um, joints, we wanna make sure that they are perfect. So, nice clean tip, just going to run an earth here, just got it sitting on the um, sandbag, makes it a little bit easier to do the work. So I've just got a little bit of real thin 0.8 um, wire and I'm just going to go along and just hit just these little areas here where this strapping comes up and goes right over. Again, then I can knock them down. Then there's enough weld in there that I know it's sealed. So when we go to weld the outside, the outside will meet. I'll put a little bit of weld into both corners and I know everything is perfectly sealed. That way from the outside, we can just run those seams right up to each other. A little fuse weld, it'll look perfect, but we know that it's fully welded. I am running a 2.4 tip. Usually when I'm doing thin stuff, I'd use a 1.6, but because this is 1.2 or um, Looks almost like 18 or 16 gauge, sorry. 2.4 should be okay. So we have a little bit of three inch stainless exhaust 316 and it just fits over top of our little fuel sender perfectly. So what I'd like to do is I want to make sure the reader is right at the top so we can get maximum amount of fuel and an accurate reading. So I'm going to cut a hole saw out to that, try and push it over to this corner as much as we can 
without getting into the contour part of it. So it's still reading an accurate base all the way down to the bottom. That way we can just slightly recess this in and then I can stick this piece in here and then we can weld it up. for 40 days I've been searching for holy flames a sign to light up the way so can you help me out can you help me out We got a three inch hole saw. We're gonna give it shit with a blunt hole saw. Called a righteous man before. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before. So can you help me out? All right, so we got our little plate, punched a little hole in it, and then that is for the recess for the actual laser beam. So that's gonna sit in there like that, and then this will sit over top, and we will weld this edge here, and then this bit can be recessed in. So just something a little bit different, a little simpler. All right, so we have our little hole drilled in here. I've cleaned around the edge. I've recessed the little straps back about a quarter of an inch so I can make sure I get a really nice weld all around the um, collar, I'll call it. So this is our recessed piece and we are gonna be able to stick this in, drop it down and then be able to tack it into place. So it will sit up a little bit. I don't want it to sit too low because we want to be able to read sort of top of the fuel tank once it's full, full.
All right, so we got the tank flipped over. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually, this is a, a stainless um, top piece for like tubing. It's like a cap that you'd use, utilize it for many things. Uh, one being like a balustrade. Um, and Liam had this across there for, uh, for surplus. So I was able to get it off him. And this is gonna be my pickup. So it's gonna sit like that. And I'm cutting it out now because I still wanna be able to tack everything um, or be able to clean the tank prior to doing all the drilling to get all the swath and everything out before we start to tack this together. Um, so I'm gonna drill a hole in that. But what I'm thinking is the bottom, you know, if it was just a, a bung that was welded there, the fuel could still run past it. But this little thing will kind of be like a little cup and it will always house just a little small amount of fuel. So hopefully it won't ever starve. Um, from there, then I can weld my bung into it and I'm gonna have it recessed in just a little bit so that any um, you know, contaminants that would sit and settle down into the tank would then kind of sit along the lip and it wouldn't actually get picked up. Eventually it will, but that's why we have fuel filters. Um, so that will, you know, hopefully you'd have at least two, one before your um, pump and one after your pump. I believe he is running an electric fuel pump with this setup, not a mechanical one. Um, for two different tanks that aren't related, they definitely fit really well. Uh, we kind of locked out. All those areas where 
I went in and kind of filled them up and then we grounded them back down. That's just gonna help again with those corners to make sure that we don't get any, any um, leakage from anywhere. So everything is tacked in. This is our sender, our breather bung is in there. We have our filler spout. On the bottom side, I, um, I could actually do this now while we're, while we're doing this. I've just left it as like a square. There wasn't really any need to, um, to, I guess, what would you call it? Like round it out and make it all flush. Fuel's still gonna fall in there. It's gonna sit in this little cup. There's a little lip in there. And then again, I just said like the, you know, debris that might be in the fuel might sit around that edge rather than actually getting picked up in the fuel line. Just tack this guy on now too. So everything is where it should be in place. And um, sitting where we want it. Everything is tacked into place. Um, I had considered not trying to um, purge it and then weld it. I don't think it's quite necessary, but again, I was like with fuel contaminants, you know, we obviously don't want it to eventually break down in there. I'm gonna try it. If it's a waste, it's a waste. If not, you know, it's, it's good practice. So I think what I'll try and do is just cover up a few of these um, and then we will run our hose inside one and let it expel out of probably this guy. I'll just um, put some tin foil over there and poke a few holes. We'll let it purge for a little while and then uh, we can go through, start to close tack everything and then um, we can fully weld it. So if it's necessary, I'm not sure, just with stainless, I think it would be a good idea. It's gonna make a better weld on the outside. So we might as well try it. couple of these holes. Doesn't need to be perfect. I know there are fancy plugs for doing um, stainless work and I will be getting a set of them for doing all this stainless exhaust work that we usually do. But this will work just fine for this bit. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm doing this. Maybe it's not necessary. I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe it is, maybe it's worth trying to do. So I'm gonna grab our little hose off here. That guy will sit in there with a little piece of tape. All right, so we're gonna let it come out of this one for now. So there's enough ventilation there. It's probably gonna seep out of here a little bit too. So I think it's gonna be all right. We're just gonna crack it open let it purge out. This is a poor man's setup that I made and all, also it's just got a, a valve here. I crack it open and I can hear it. I've kind of got it set where I know, where I know it likes to be. I can hear it. It's probably a, a, a quite a big setup to be per, um, trying to back purge, but we're just gonna do it anyway. Once it's got all the CO2 out of there, um, you can use like a flame and you can hold it up to it. And if it blows the flame out right, right away or sort of extinguishes it, um, you know that it is full of argon. So another little tech tip. I learned that one from Liam and it definitely does work. There are plenty of other things. If you do want to learn how to back purge properly and the right way, I'm probably not the guy to ask.
All right, so we've got our sender, our breather, and our filler all welded in. And I can definitely feel like I know when it's purged because you can see it when you're doing the welds. Like it, 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 it kind of like, how do I explain it? There's probably a really easy way of explaining it from someone who's a crazy welding guru, but it's like a standard weld would want to sink in sort of, and this kind of comes up a little bit. Even just doing this small little one here, I've noticed it makes a huge difference. So um, I'm kind of swapping and changing between uh, filler rods, but I am using 1.6 filler. I got a 2.4 tungsten in my TIG, and I'm currently running um, about 75 amps, but I have the foot pedal. So every time I'm dabbing, I'm adding a little bit more and kind of going that way. So it sort of fluctuates. I think I was running about 80 amps before and kind of brought it down. I may go up and down. So uh, not sure whether or not, like it is tacked, it's not going anywhere. So I don't think it's gonna distort it like crazy if I just do a weld from here to here. All right, so looks a little bit different from the last clip because I've tested some paint. Uh, it was really hard to find, I didn't know you weren't allowed to get it anymore, um, but the original chromate stuff was obviously very highly um, corrosive and gives you to your body. I think it gives you like lung cancer. So yeah, be, be careful with, the, with that old stuff. Um, but I did find an option. You can see that it is slightly uh, more yellow or a brighter than what this tank is. But having said that, this tank is super old and dirty, but after I do a little antiquing on the whole thing, um, it will look all as one in unison, which will be amazing. But it is a wash primer, so it definitely is very good for aluminum and um, stainless and it has a lot of bite so it's it's full of acid you get really good adhesion and it gives you a very cool color so so similar to what we were trying to uh to reach so really happy with the way it turned out that was a lot of fun to create and build um, it was neat to be able to make this little recess for the sender itself and it sits in there really nicely um, and then again we will have our fitting for our breather on the top and our pickup and we will kind of design those once we fit it in, into the coop itself. So we will be making some really neat mounts to hold this with some really cool um, straps. And the best part about it is we were able to get one of our longtime 
uh, followers and friend, Greg. Um, he has been kind of with us for the whole YouTube journey. I hit him up. He is an amazing saddle maker, or used to be, uh, does upholstery and everything, but I hit him up for some, uh, some really cool ideas with some leather. So he's, um, we've, we've kind of both on the same page there. So by the next video that comes out, I'll have that in my possession to be able to show you how I'm gonna do it all. And we will see you next week when you get to watch all this happening. The shop is blowing up and you get to see the Hemi Coupe is, you know, the, it's like two magnets and they're trying to come at each other. They want to be together. So we need to get this thing sorted out so that we can get it over the frame so we can finally channel it and get it done. And then it'll look something kind of like Ben's Roadster, which we're still waiting on a few parts for. Um, yeah, water pump, radiator, steering column, tires and wheels, and a couple other bits and pieces. And this thing is gonna be on another episode again, but it'll be really nice to kind of dig into that a little bit too. And maybe potentially that guy up there, but he's pretty, he's out of reach at the moment. Also, you guys have one more week until we announce the winner of our little builder series that you guys have been submitting in to us. Um, so make sure that you submit to this email right here. And that way, uh, by our next video next Friday, um, we will be able to announce the winner. And it has been pretty hard to go through. We did not realize the amount that we were going to get. And it's been so cool to sit down and just go through the amount of creativity that's happening, car-related, bike-related, um, there's a shark involved, small watch restore. Yeah, I don't know. I think it just really gets me excited to, to see the amount of creativity that's going out there and everyone's getting out there and using their hands, which is, which is awesome. So you have one more week, then we will announce the winners. And then, um, yeah, we'll continue this for quite a while, I think. So get out into the workshop and um, yeah, or get into the garage, the shed, whatever, you, whatever you're working out of. Or, or if you don't have anything, go make one. I remember when I used to build four wheel drive trucks, the first shed ever worked out of was at Daryl's place. Daryl, I know you'll be listening to this. We, um, he had a really nice piece of property and we went to an auction and found a bunch of one inch uh, eight by four sheets of plywood. And I don't remember how many we got, but it was a lot. And we flipped them all, laid them all out onto the ground. We screwed a bunch of two by fours everywhere and we flipped it all over and we literally made a massive shop floor out of it all, laid it right down on top of the grass. And then we made a skeleton frame shed out of just your cheap um, like storage tents that you can get. And then we put a ton of tarps all the way around it. I forget what we called it. It was something about Tarp City. And, um, and anyways, it's, I literally, we worked out of that for probably two years and it would literally, when it would rain, the rain would come up and if you were jacking in the wrong area on, the, on that uh, one inch floor, you'd start to get water seeping up through it. But Daryl, myself, Steve, and a couple others, we all created some really amazing four wheel drive trucks out of that place. And everything surprisingly was really square, which was cool. And we even had like the uh, plasma set up in the corner and we were cutting stuff out with it. We had a pot belly that we put through and just put sheets of aluminum around the area. Like it was, it was something else and it, it worked. So, you know, if you, if you don't have access to a shed or, uh, or, you know, someone's garage or, or something like that, you know, get creative, get out there, get under the tent, start working out of it. Cause it, it's possible, it works and it's a lot of fun. Anyways, make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit notifications, and we'll see you next week on Bennett's Customs. Thank you very much.